everyone welcome back to my channel reseller rowboat I'm so glad you're here especially if you're a first-time watcher hey my name is Beth I live in Houston I sell clothing on eBay and Poshmark and I'm glad you found your way over here do please consider subscribing by hitting the rowboat in the bottom right hand corner of your screen anytime during this video be sure you click the bell and hit all for notifications so you'll be notified the next time I go live or upload a video Today I'm going to be talking to you about the way that I prepare to get items listed, drafted, I mean on eBay. It's pretty fast. It's going to seem like it takes extra time, but it really doesn't. And it makes my uh, drafts a lot more accurate, a lot, make a lot less mistakes, and it also helps me with photographing. So I'm going to try to go in a sequential order here and hopefully this will make sense. Sometimes I will be on the screen, sometimes I'll be showing you pictures. So this is the time when I'm in the living room at night. This is when I do this um, piece of work. I print out these inventory sheets, which I'm going to show you on the screen in a minute, but I print two of them out side by side on an eight and a half by 11 um, piece of paper. Then I cut them. Like I said, I print out 15 at a time, so that's 30 sheets. When I'm finished with 30 pieces of clothing, I'm done for the night. I usually do this once every day or once every other day because I like to have all of these things already ready to go. All right, now, I'm gonna probably put it up on the screen now. So here's what it looks like. So the very first thing you will see on the sheet, oh, by the way, I got this from another reseller and when I got it, it didn't have all of these different things on it. It had some other things that I didn't use and then there were things that were missing that I needed so I kind of made it my own and if you would like a copy of what I have right now you're always welcome to email me at resellerrowboat at gmail.com and I'll be glad to send you it's in a word document all right so let's go from top to bottom left to right so the first one is the tag number so the tag number is I put one of these little tags on each piece of clothing with a number with a binder clip and so 83 would go there in tag number. Now I do this for different reasons. Uh, the first reason is when I'm going through hundreds and hundreds of photos to put them into my draft instead of having to look for this specific dress all I have to do is look for the number you know most of my items are in order of photographing but sometimes they get mixed up so I don't have to worry about accidentally putting the wrong photo with the wrong item this has been a lifesaver because sometimes I might photograph three t-shirts that are all the same color and I don't want to have to sit there and figure out which one's which so this number is awesome for me all right Next is the SKU number. Now the SKU number, when I'm actually sitting in my living room, I only put the first three letters of the SKU number. Uh, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So let me just show you a couple of them that I've already done. So on this sheet, I put A and I. That means this is an animal print pattern. And this one, the first three letters is FLO. That means it's a floral pattern. And then this one here is red, so I just put R-E-D, and then I will put a number after that, okay, when I'm actually drafting. And the reason I don't put an entire SKU number is I use an Excel sheet for my SKU numbers. And so let's just say that I put red one on this, and then I put it on my Excel sheet, and then I put the item up on the mannequin, and I was taking a photo, and I realized there's a great big rip on the back of this outfit. I don't want to sell it. Well, that would mean I would have to not only take it out of my drafts on eBay, but then I'd have to go to my Excel sheet and delete it from my Excel sheet. And I don't want to do that extra work. So that's why I just put the very first one. I know what section of my inventory room this is going to go in. All right. Also, I reuse SKU numbers. And so it gets very confusing when you're deleting and adding SKU numbers. And I, I don't want to deal with that. Okay. All right, the next thing uh, to the right is COG, that's the cost of goods. I don't fill that out right now because everything I buy right now is $1.75 each. However, if I did go to the 25 cent sale, I would put 25 cents there so that I would put it in my SKU and that way if someone made me a really low ball offer and I only paid 25 cents for it, yeah, I would go ahead and, and take that low ball offer. 
Next, you see the brand. Now, in the brand, I've made, some, to make this faster, I've done some abbreviations. So LB is Lane Bryant, QF is Quacker Factory, um, SH is Sag Harbor. You get the idea. So I don't have to write those out anymore. I've got my own little shorthand that I've made, and it's awesome. Then I either I circle whether it's career wear or casual wear or both and I haven't put party there but I've been picking up a lot of items that can be worn to parties so I may be adding party eventually to that uh, top of the page. Then you have men's, women's, size, and style. I really don't circle men's because the majority of what I sell is women's so I really just circle it when it's, uh, circle it when it's men's. Of course I do put the size and then the style. So style would be jeans, or it's a tunic, or it's a cover-up. That's what would go under style. The next line is about, most of it's about jeans. So I would circle boot cut, chino, straight, these are pants, cropped, capri. Comfort means anything that's got an elastic waist and then very, very stretchy. Flare, shorts, skinny, relaxed, and dress pants. So I circle those as I go, just sitting there watching TV. New with tags, I circle that if it's new with tags. Otherwise, it's pre-owned. I haven't been putting pre-owned because most everything I sell is pre-owned. Um, okay, the next one is for basically pants. It's the wash, light, medium, dark, distressed, five pocket, elastic waist, slash pockets. And then you have my measurements. So I have waist, hips, sleeve, rise, inseam, length, hem, and chest. The next row is the sleeves, long sleeve, short sleeve, three-quarter sleeve, sleeveless, spaghetti strap, cold shoulder, and then you see my colors there. When I first started, I only had like, I don't know, eight or nine colors. Now I've added burgundy, I've added silver, I've added indigo, and I've also added multicolor so that I don't have to circle five different colors because I really don't need to because there's no place to put five different colors in a draft. Then I've got my patterns there, camo, solid, stripe, paisley, tribal, geometric, watercolor, mosaic, floral, animal print, plaid, and tie-dye. The next one is skirts, mini, midi, maxi, a-line, flare, and pencil. Then comes the uh, country of manufacturer. I have had to abbreviate all of those. I've had to add a lot. I still wish I had room for several others, but I don't, so I just write them in the margin if they're not there. Then we come down to materials, acetate, acrylic, cotton, cotton blend, linen, nylon, rayon, polyester, polyester blend, silk, spandex, viscose, and wool. The next is closure, zip, button, pullover, one quarter zip, one quarter button, snaps, and drawstring. Next one's the, the neckline, boat, collared, cowl slash draped, crew, round, square, sweetheart, turtleneck, v-neck, and I also need to put high neck. Then the next ones are item specifics. These are usually accents or features, asymmetric, beads, crochet, embroidery, eyelet, glitter, keyhole, lace, lightweight, lined, mesh, pin tuck, pleated, rhinestone, ruched, sash, sequins, sheer, studded, sublimation. Some of these I just added recently and I keep forgetting that they're there. These were items that I used to write at the bottom of the sheet all the time like sash, and sublimation. I just added those and I've forgotten a couple of times already that they're there and I'm still writing them. I'm hoping this will keep me from writing them. The next is the wash machine hand or dry clean only. Then I have people ask me all the time is this stretchy or not stretchy so I circle stretchy or not stretchy. I put the price. Now I, when I am sitting on the couch measuring clothes I do not look up the price because I don't have my computer with me. So and that's another reason why I don't put a SKU number because I don't have my computer with me in the living room to make a SKU number because my spreadsheet is in my computer. Forgot to say that. So I leave the price blank. I don't do the pricing until I'm actually making the draft. Then I have a space for flaws and then at the bottom I put if there's anything unusual about it, really cool, like a racer back. Um, I haven't put racer back in my features yet so I might put racer back. Then I circle if I think it's going to be first class or priority. If I'm not sure, I put a question mark under priority to make sure that I weigh the item before I draft it and put it away in my inventory.
after I have written these out on the couch, I put, um, I, I take these, sometimes I take them with me wherever I go, um, you know, different places, and I mean, I can just literally take my laptop and work on them anywhere, because I don't have to have the clothes, because now I have everything I need to know about the item, I can actually draft it, so um, I draft it, so let me show you something that's been drafted, okay? So by drafting, I'm creating a draft in eBay. I use uh, templates for that. Let me just find one here that's been drafted. All right, and then excuse my writing because I write really, really uh, messy when I'm drafting. Sometimes I can't even read my own writing, okay? But what I do is I write down, when I put the draft, I write down how much I want to ask for the item. This is $24.99. Now, I just knew that off the top of my head because I sell Catherine's tops all the time and I know how much I can get for each kind of Catherine's top. But let's say I wasn't sure and I would go to Terapeak, I would do my research, and then I would put here what I'm going to list it for. And I would put that in the draft. And the reason I write it here, even though it's already in the draft, is when I cross post it to Poshmark, I just look down here and I know to put $25 in Poshmark. For this item then i write a great big d and i put a circle on it that means it's been drafted on ebay and then i go into my little it's like a little accordion um, binder organizer i just got this and i love it um, and then i just put this with the c's because this is Catherine's, and that way when i bring that top up after photographing it and i'm ready to you know actually let the finish the draft I can find it easily I was spending a lot of time alphabetizing things and it was driving me crazy so I'm doing it that way when I'm doing these inventory sheets um, I'm buttoning buttons I'm snapping snaps the items have already been washed but let's say that I find a flaw or um, or something that I need to be sure that I photograph what I do is in addition to putting this clip, I take another clip, let me just get another clip, and I put it next to this clip, and that tells me there's something about this item that needs to be taken a look at. Let's just say it had ring around the collar, <laughs> and I couldn't get it out, which is not going to happen, but let's just say I had ring around the collar. On the inventory sheet at the bottom, I put this has ring around the collar, and then I would put a little clip here, and that's telling me, Beth, when you photograph this, there's something special about this that you need to show a close-up of. Maybe the zipper's broken, or the hem has been let out a little bit, you know. And if I, and usually I do these within a day, so I can remember. That's why I don't like to do things you know 10 15 days later I like to do it like the next day because I remember oh yeah that dress the hem was let out you know if I don't remember I can just go to the inventory sheet really quickly and look and see what is it about this idea thing I need to photograph another thing I will do is when I'm doing these sheets in in the living room sometimes I can't find the dang material tag some of these material tags are really hiding I mean most of them are in the right place well, let's say, well, here's one here. It's kind of, um, it's not where it's supposed to be. Well, that one may be at the top. Hold on, let me look. This may not be a good example. No, it is. So let's go ahead and look in here. Okay, I see it. This material tag is like in the middle of the dress. It's not at the bottom. So what I will do is I will take a great big binder clip, or, you know, la pretty large, and I'll, I'll put it, right here and so when I go to photograph the material tag and I can't find it I just pat on the dress and, and I'll feel that clip I'm like there's the material tag and then I don't spend my, myself crazy you know looking for the material tag twice in a row I found it once but I don't want to have to look for it a second time so anyway, this one, now I've got the binder clip in there and now I can't find it to get it out. So give me a second. Now I've got this whole thing inside out. See, this is what happens when you um, record videos, things like that happen. I found it. All right. Yeah, If so like if I'm photographing something and I was telling you about this before, 
and I find a really major flaw and I don't want to, um, I don't want to sell it. I throw it here in my chair so that I have to sit on it basically. Um, and then when I'm done photographing, if it's in my chair, I know, hey, I got to get this out of the drafts and throw it away, discard it. Um, likewise, I might find a, you know, a small flaw, like a little teeny tiny dot. And I use um, little green arrow stickers to take a photo of, you know, a spot or something. Again, I will put a clip there so that when I bring it over to draft it, I don't forget because I didn't put it on the sheet, you know. So that's kind of like a double, that's how I double check. So let's say now I'm ready to draft my item. I may or may not have photographed it yet. Usually I do this before I photograph an item. So we're just going to go straight off of my sheet. I'll show you how easy it is. I'm going to put it down here next to me. So this is a pullover top. So I'm going to go to my templates and put pull over top. It's going to take me a little bit because my computer is up high for the video and I don't normally type like this. So hopefully I can do this quickly without a lot of errors. So this is a style and company women's top 3x pullover sleeveless I'm just going right down the sheet. It's a watercolor pattern. It's draped, ruched, career. I can't type up here, sorry. Casual, goes a lot better when my uh, career casual will not fit. So I'm gonna take casual out because this is more of a career top. Uh, be careful about these because if you put uh, certain things in here, it's going to be very confusing. Um, so this is going to go in my watercolor area. So it's going to do WAT when I actually have photographed the item and are ready to edit the listing, the draft, and save it to go live um, or also cross post it to Poshmark. At this time, I will cross post it to Poshmark when I, not at this time, but uh, when I actually have the item in my hand, I will come pull up this draft, I will make sure everything's fine, and that's when I'll cross post it. I'll make my label um, for my item off of the title with the SKU number, and then I'll put it away. So I'm just gonna leave that there for now. And I have a store category for tops, so I don't use it very often, but I have, I have it there in case I need it. So it's a 3X and it's going to go in my category of spades, which means it was listed in May. All right. I'm having trouble right now with eBay not um, putting the brands. Normally it's style and company with no spaces. And you see it's not found, but I'm going to have to do it myself and just hope that eBay picks it up later. I know it's a plus size, it's a blouse, and the color is black and white, which means it's multicolor. I will have to come back up and put the size, or make sure the size is correct in a minute. Oh, they put it in there. Sometimes it'll put medium, guys, so be very, very careful. Make sure you go back and make sure it's the correct size. The style is basic. The neck is square. Normally, I'll type in SQU, and it'll come up. Um, the sleeve type, there's no sleeve type because it is sleeveless. The material is poly blend. See, I'm not having to pick up these clothes over and over again to look at all this up and down, up and down. I do this on the couch. Um, it's a watercolor pattern. Unfortunately, watercolor is not a choice, so I have to leave that blank. I have all seasons already defaulted, but this is a stretchy top, so I'm going to put stretch on that. And then uh, the occasion is career casual, and it's a pullover is already defaulted. The seasons are already defaulted. I put that all on my template, so I don't have to do it over and over again. The country of manufacture is Indonesia. Handmade, no, hardly anything is handmade, so I default it to that, and it's machine washable. That's all I fill out. And then I come down here and I put that the material is stretchy. Like I said, a lot of people ask me if it's stretchy or non-stretchy, so I automatically do that. I put my WAT there, so at the future time when I actually edit the draft and 
uh, crossbows up to Poshmark, it will already be there. POS means that it is going to be cross-listed to Poshmark. All right, then I come down here. I know it's going to be $24.99 because I'm, that's just typically what I would sell it for or best offer. If I didn't know, this is when the time when I would do uh, the research on Terapeak. It's already set for 15 ounces. I'm done with that draft, guys. So all I have to do is hit save for later. It goes into my drafts. I'm going to go ahead and write a great big D on this. All right. Right there. Great big D. It's drafted. It's going to go in my organizer. And then once these are photographed, I'll bring them over. I'll pull up my drafts. And I will um, finish it and cross post it to Poshmark. Put the label on and put it in my inventory room. So you can see right now I have 61 drafts. They're all in different phases. The ones that have pictures have already been put away. They've already been cross posted to Poshmark. Um, what I do is every morning I go to creation date, whichever ones have been created the earliest. There's April 27th for some reason. That one was not photographed, probably because it's back in the wash for a spot that I missed. Okay. But all these with pictures are ready to go. So I will pull up 12 a day and resume the draft and let them go live if they have photographs. Okay, so again, this inventory sheet has really been great for me because I don't miss very many flaws. I get most of my item specifics filled, uh, filled out and it's like I see it twice, right? And that sounds like double work, but it's really not because I'm just looking at this and entering the data. And I can be literally anywhere with my computer doing this. I don't have to be home. So I hope you'll try it out if it's something that you're interested in. I hope it helps you. I would love for you to give this video a thumbs up and comment below if you like these types of videos. If you're new to my channel, I do have live streams on Sunday nights where I show you what sold over the weekend. I ship them out. I also have live working hangouts and I'm also offering private working hangouts at this time. I also have product reviews, bullet journaling videos, and a whole lot more. So check out my playlist. Thanks a lot for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.